Welcome you into Chicago, where it's the end of a picture-perfect summer day along Lakeshore Drive. Just down the road at the United Center, we pay homage to someone who was just a little bit familiar with the art of the dunk, Michael Jordan, and in to Wintrust Arena, the site of the second annual Puma Basketball Dunk Contest here at the basketball tournament. Flashback to a year ago, last July in Atlanta, this was Marcus Lewis, a posterization at $40,000, winning the inaugural Puma Hoops Dunk Contest over top of Derek Cook Jr. And we welcome you courtside, everybody. Matt Martucci and the former Liberty Flame, Tim Scarborough, who got to see the energy and excitement of what was a year ago. This year, we ramp it up a little bit. This is dunk contest on steroids. Well, you know, we saw the way the dunk contest ended that way, so we decided to do the whole contest that way. The contestants will dunk on each other, so you not only have to have style and flash, you have to play some D tonight. And it's eight different contestants tonight who are in fact competing uh, for the prize of this $40,000. Let's meet them. Jason Barrera, who played at College of Mount St. Vincent. They call him Jay Wavy. And supplied by Puma, Leon Sewell, who played for Team Brotherly Love, He's still alive, and owner of what is a 45-inch vertical. And how now, about some of these other now guys? This guy, Will Coleman, at six foot nine, to me, a decided advantage over the person he's going to be dunking on and who is trying to stop. And this guy, Zachariah Jones, Zach Jones, they call him Jonesy. A pro dunker for what's 10 years and wearing that red scare jersey. Yeah, but he's from Dayton, Ohio. He's just a six footer, man. It's going to be tough for him to stop people and dunk over people. But Khalil Iverson is my guy. The guy I think could win this whole thing. But hold on. Michael Ray Purdy might have something to say about that. Purdy, a professional dunker in his own right. Five of the last six dunk contests he's winning this year, he's won them. And Joe Nathan jumping Joe Ballard. And then A.J. Merriweather, who saw his team go out in TBT last night. Jackson Underdogs no longer alive for the $2 million prize. What a chance for him to take home $40,000. Let's go down to the third member of our team and say good evening to Jen Hale, who has our celebrity judges. Hi guys, great to be with you again. This year we have an all-star panel of judges, four of them who will be deciding who takes home $40,000. Let's get started with our first judge this evening. Please welcome back home to Chicago, his, his hometown, Mr. Sterling Brown, of course, with the Milwaukee Bucks, awesome defensive threat, three-point shooter, back home with his guys. We also have Instagram sensation and NBA celebrity trainer, Chris Brickley, 700,000 followers. I logged on and I thought maybe I'd try some of the workouts and then I decided, nah, can't do that. <laughs> awesome stuff. And of course, a man who needs no introduction, DeMarcus Cousins. You'll see him suiting up for the LA Lakers. He also, besides judging, has had a team playing in TBT this tournament. DeMarcus, tell us, give us a little insight what you're looking for into tonight's dunk contest. Uh, I just want to see some power. I want to see somebody get banged on. <laughs> so let's make it happen. Something tells me that will happen easily. And of course, Michael Porter Jr., we're so glad to have you as well. He will be returning to the Denver Nuggets this season, ready to make an impact. So guys, back to you. These judges have their work cut out for them tonight. And thank you very much, Jen. And they picked our eight contestants out of, wouldn't you know it, a, a Puma shoe. Huh. And one through eight will square off our rules here in the Puma Basketball Dunk Contest. Random draw sets the matchups. One posterized dunk trying to go up over the other. And then a scoring system one through 10, two highest scores advance to the championship round. And if you happen to have a tie, a freestyle dunk off between a pair of tied players, we have one referee who will call fouls. Winner, 40 grand. Runner up gets $10,000. And Scar, here's our order. You know, Jason J. Wavy Barrera is a small player like we talked about. AJ May Merriweather as well. But both those guys are great dunkers in their own right. But to me, it's about negating the dunk that you're blocking and then bringing the style and the power. All set to get it rolling here from Chicago. Jay Wavy Barrera. Recently inked a deal, professional deal with the Harlem Wizards. And paired against the eight by the random draw. 
AJ Merriweather. Was hoping to make this a better weekend in Chicago after a loss at TBT with Jackson under oh, man. Already, it's already on, Toots. That was great defense by Merriweather. And to me, when you try to windmill dunk on a guy, it gives the defender time to negate it. Watch this as Merriweather just goes up with two hands. He cannot follow him. If he does, it's a do over. So now Merriweather gets a chance to posterize Jay Wavy. Let's see what happens here. Former runner-up in the NCAA dunk contest. Whoa. And no dice for Money Merriweather. See, I feel like he was fouled, though. I think he needs a do-over. He's asking for one, but he's, he's not going to get it. No deposit, no return, Scarborough. <laughs> Tell you what, athleticism already on display, though. But you have to try, and you know, I was a dunker in my own right, but I never had to dunk over people in a contest. It's got to be hard. But to me, you have to go right through the guy that you're going up against. And that's why I like Will Coleman from Bluff City, the former Memphis star over there in blue. Leon Space Jam Sewell from Brotherly Love. Who's still to come tonight yeah, he's got game, a game number two. This. Yeah, how about Save that? Save those legs. So now it's a question of money. Do you want to go for 40000 for yourself or save your legs and go for $2 million for the group? And he's matched up with Dayton, Ohio native Jumpin' Joe Ballard. Who was said to have rockets in his shoes by his <laughs> high school coach. Well, he's wearing Pumas now. Let's see if Puma has come out with the rocket shoe for 2019. Space Jam and Jumpin' Joe. <laughs> And couldn't get it down. But I like what Sewell did. He tried to go around jumping Joe instead of going up. And, and Joe has one of the, the highest verticals, maybe the highest vertical in this contest. But watch how Sewell goes around him. Joe actually tried to meet him at the top floor. But Sewell couldn't convert the dunk. But I, it may have changed the direction in which he goes. See, once he gets by him right here, he's just losing the ball, Toots. He just needs to hammer that thing down. He's already by the defender. Just make the dunk. You never had that problem, right? No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> Unless you have a videotape to say otherwise, I'm going to say no. <laughs> Jump at Joe with a chance to try and return the favor. Fourth dunk of the night. Uh -oh. oh, my God. And again, couldn't get it down. Um, I don't know if you saw that, but he tried the 360 on a defender. This guy is special. Didn't make the dunk, but my goodness, the effort. And you know, Sewell actually blocked that. He got a hand on it. But the question is, did he stay in that circle? The answer is yes. What an athletic play. My goodness. That's straight up. He stayed in the circle. Well, how about the 360 attempt? But the, but the block, you see. Great camera work there. Now our third seed. Here's my guy. Out of the shoe, the power of Will Coleman potentially on display. Yeah, this, this, this might get dangerous. And Michael Ray Purdy, who has won a bunch of dunk contests, five of the six he's competed in in this calendar year. So far, it's been all defense. Let's see if we can get one made. Oh, my goodness. It is amazing at how, how high these guys are getting. I think there was a foul called on that one. So now, Tooch, in this situation, the defender cannot jump. He can defend, but he can't jump. So Will Coleman has an excellent opportunity to get this poster. Referee Earl Walton. Lone decider. Yeah. A foul or no. Second chance. Easy. <laughs> and no problem for Coleman. And all Michael Purdy could do was say, hey, I can't jump. I can't offer resistance. I just got to stand here and be a part of this poster. Smile. Boom. Right on his head. And now Coleman, they flip it. 
Well, our judges don't seem to be too impressed. Right. <laughs> Must be the height differential. He's the only one who made one, though. Oh, he didn't try anything stylish. He just went up and hammered it. It and takes that, a lot to impress Cuz. Yeah, no doubt. The Boogie Cousins over there, they just had a great game against Overseas Elite. And he's helping us out with this dunk contest as a judge, but they were not feeling that dunk. Now Michael Purdy in his 46-inch vertical on display tonight. Can he get over him? No, he can't. I feel like he got fouled. <laughs> Earl Walton, <laughs> our official, is, is hearing it from the audience. I think they're right, though. See if we can take a look. Will Coleman goes straight up, and you know what? I'm going to take that back. I don't think he was fouled. Coleman goes straight up, and Michael Purdy tried to push him off with his offhand. I don't and think he was holding on to the ball anyway. It wouldn't yeah, have mattered. Yeah. But he was really trying to get the foul so he can pay back Will Coleman with a with a dunk where Coleman wouldn't allow, be allowed to offer any resistance. And it's our last set of dunkers. It's Jonesy, Zach Jones, out of Dayton, Ohio. He was a YouTube sensation, and we know you like this guy, Khalil Iverson. I love Khalil Iverson, a star at Wisconsin, and he played for Cold Blooded and TBT. When he gets his opportunity, he's going to take the stairway to heaven. Oh, this is a bounce dunk. Watch this. Woo! And denial from Iverson. Nice. But see, to me, when you bounce it like that, Iverson can time the jump just like you as the dunker. This is what he does. Jonesy goes up, and he's met with a wall of resistance from Iverson. He basically set up his own block shot. <laughs> That's a great point. And now we're going to see Iverson take us to the penthouse. A vertical that is anywhere from 35 to 40 inches for Khalil Iverson, depending on where you read it. And, and he's wearing his Puma sweats. He's not even going to take the pants off. And an almost seven foot wingspan for the guy who played at Wisconsin for Greg Gard. Here we go. Are you uh, Jay Billis Jr. with the wingspan? <laughs> it's what we call a measurable scar. No, no, I get it, I get it. So far, only one dunker registering a score. Yeah, and that score was paltry, though. But right here, he's going to get himself into the finals. Iverson, oh. head down! Posterized um, into the finals. I think there's a chalk outline in that lane that has Jonesy's name on it. Man, body though. Watch this. Explosion, the bump, it doesn't matter. He's like a flea on a dog right there. Iverson, second look, different angle. The power, the force. Woo! Two hands, and Jonesy takes a spill. My goodness. Get on my Instagram account. Uh, it's the, the pairing where the matchup really mattered the most because of the height differential. And they like it better than the one that Will Coleman put down, yeah, at least. so far, that's the high score. So Coleman from Memphis and Khalil Iverson squaring off in what will be our championship round. And Khalil Iverson happy that he drew his pairing. <laughs> This is going to be a battle of sheer power. And I got my two guys that I talked about. Michael Purdy gave a little resistance, but this is just not his style. These dunkers are strong and powerful. That's why they're in the finals. Let's go over to Jen Hale. All right, guys, finding out what Michael Porter Jr. thought of the two dunks that went. Why did you give the scores you gave? I mean, the first one, uh, dude didn't even jump, so it was an uncontested <laughs> dunk. But that last one was crazy, so I gave it an eight. An eight, all right. Looking forward to the finals between these two? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely, all right. Let's find out Sterling. Your hometown, you're watching them compete. What did you think of the defense these guys gave? 
Bro, it was great. It was great timing, man. Uh, some of them guys should have made some of them, but this net, this last round right here going to be interesting. All right, Chris, what are you looking for in this round? You are the trainer. You are the expert in athleticism here. I'm just looking for someone to get posterized. <laughs> I hope number four is okay. All right. Th thinking good thoughts, sending good thoughts. Boogie, how would you rate the talent you've seen out here so far tonight? Uh, it's been incredible to watch. Uh, a lot of guts to come out here and do this. So, uh, you know, kudos to those guys. It has been fun to watch, and it's just going to get better. Guys, let's send it back to you. Yeah, thank you, Jen. Tim, nobody wants to get posterized. Well, nobody wants to be on Instagram getting facial like that. But the reality is the two most powerful dunkers in this competition had the advantage, and we see what happened. Those two guys are in the finals. One is going to win 10000 The other is going to win $40,000. X Games Minneapolis continues tomorrow at 1 Eastern, noon Central on ABC, then 7 Eastern, 6 Central on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. The afternoon coverage highlighted by the Monster Energy Moto X Best Trick and the Real Cost Skateboard Big Air Finals. While ESPN2 will have BMX Street, the Real Cost BMX Dirt, and Moto X Best Whip Finals. Still to come, Will Coleman, Khalil Iverson, Somebody's taking home $40,000. We only wish it were one of us. <laughs> so we found over enough. But we, we got to quit giving them stuff, man. What, who, who was that on the boat? What was that? Did you hit it low hands or what? He did.